In a circuit that's being driven by a sinusoidally varying voltage, the current that's flowing in that circuit is also going to be sinusoidal. And the power delivered to this resistive load, which is equal to the voltage times the current, times the current is also going to be varying. That means at some points when the voltage and current are at maximum values, you're going to be delivering a lot of power to the load. And at times when the voltage or the current is zero, you won't be, at that instant, you won't be delivering any power to the load. So then becomes interesting to say, well, is there a way of determining what the average power is being delivered over one cycle? Is there some effective quantity that we can use to calculate the effective power or the average power that's being delivered to the load? Well, you might say, well, let's just take the average of it. Let's start with a voltage source or some sinusoidally varying thing and calculate its average value. Well, the average value of, say, some sinusoidally varying voltage, V of t, if V of t is equal to uh, V sub m cosine omega t, then the average voltage is defined as 1 over t times the integral from 0 to t, V sub m cosine omega t dt. Well, without going to bother of doing this integration, we know that when you integrate, you're actually adding up the area under the curve. And in this case, going from 0 to t, we're going over one period and adding up the area. It turns out that in a sine wave, there's just as much area above the axis, positive area, as there is area under the line. And thus, the average voltage is zero. Well, that doesn't help us a whole lot because we know there's power being delivered to that resistive load, but calculating the average voltage or the average current isn't going to do anything for us. Instead, we calculate what is known as the root mean squared or the effective voltage. And to do that, we start by taking our voltage or a current. We're going to calculate it for both the voltage and the current and you square that quantity. And here's the voltage squared. You'll notice that what was negative has now been flipped over so that it's now positive. And the shape is somewhat different, but it still ranges from, in this case, 0 to 1. We then average this squared value. And then to bring it back to the appropriate amplitude or the appropriate units, we take the square root of it. In other words, the RMS value, or this effective value of the voltage, is found by squaring the voltage, calculating the average of the square, and then taking the square root of that. Let's go ahead and show you what we mean here. If v, sub, v of t is equal to V sub m cosine omega t, then V squared of t is equal to V sub m squared cosine squared of omega t. And we're going to take that, we're going to calculate the average of that, which is done by calc integrating from 0 to t. Let's bring the V sub m squared out in front, since it's a constant. Cosine squared of omega t dt. We have to avail ourselves of a, of a trigonometric identity that says that the cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta. So to perform this integral, the trick is to, instead of trying to integrate the cosine squared, we use this identity and substitute in then, for this we have v sub m squared over t times the integral from 0 to t, 1 half, we'll bring the 1 half out in front also, times 1 plus the cosine of 2 omega t dt. Now when we integrate this over the period, this term we're actually integrating over two periods, and in the same way that when you integrate it over one period, the positive area canceled the negative area, this term here likewise gives us a zero contribution to this integral. When you integrate 1 with respect to t, you get just t, and so we have v sub m squared over 2t 
times t evaluated from 0 to t. That then is just v sub m squared over 2. So we squared it, we calculated the average, now all that's left to do is to take the square root of it, and we have then v rms is equal to the square root of v sub m squared over 2. If we take that square root of 2 out from under the radical, it comes out as 1 over the square root of 2 times the square root of v sub m squared. Well, that's just v sub m. Thus, we see that the RMS value, this effective voltage, is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 times v sub m, where v sub m was the maximum value, our peak value. Well, 1 over the square root of 2, that's approximately equal to 0 0.707 times v sub m. So the effective voltage is something on the order of pretty close to being about 70% of the peak value, 0 0.707 V peak. Now then, what does that do for us? With this effective or this RMS value, we can now calculate an average power delivered to our resistive load is equal to VRMS times IRMS. The same expression that we've been used to using all along. In other words, this RMS voltage and RMS current are the effectively the same as what you would have if you had a DC source driving it. To say that in yet a different way, a DC source with a value of VRMS will deliver the same amount of power to a resistive load as an AC signal with V sub M voltage peak.